Hello everyone, welcome to the Captain's Video Blog. We are Sunday, November the 13th, 2016. So, uh, yeah, um, the only thing I have to say about the events of last year is that, um, well, a few days ago, our Prime Minister announced that he was going to extend the, the state of emergency by a few months, which is completely dumb. It's, you know, political suicide. Because he said that he wants uh, Hollande to be re-elected in 2017, you know, just around the corner. Uh, but then again, uh, Hollande has to go through the primaries of the Socialist Party, um, and you're really not helping him by doing that, because uh, you have in the same election, you know, in the same primaries, uh, kind of a lot of, of people with uh, are of pretty high profile in the party who are a bit more to the left and would probably repeal that fucking thing. Um, also, you have way to the right, um, <laughs> well, the primary of the right, and the National Front, who, you know, you're probably helping them a lot by doing that, because we don't really see the results of the, of the, the state of emergency. Um, so yeah, good job. Uh, speaking of, of sarcast sarcasm and stuff that, that happened in the past and that's pissing me off today, uh, Ghost in the Shell, <coughs> that was the new trailer with Scarlett Johansson uh, standing on the top of the building saying, here's the major, I'm going in. <coughs> now, you know, I don't want to be too critical, maybe she she will have retained her name, you know, uh, Makoto Kusanagi, which would be a hell of strange for, you know, a something looking like a white person being called Makoto Kusanagi, because when you think of Makoto Kusanagi, you, you know, you, the, the first face that pops in your head probably doesn't look like Scarlett Johansson's, and yet, here we are. Um, so yeah, uh, everyone has said, yeah, she's a robot, no ethnicity, <sighs> really, we want to, to be trailblazers, pioneers, uh, open the floodgates uh, with the adaptations of Ghost in the Shell, we want to bring more manga and anime to live action movies, blockbusters, Hollywood, and uh, you like, well, you're not really pioneering anything if you don't take some risk. And I don't think that adapting Ghost in the Shell is, you know, taking enough risks in itself. Maybe, you know, a little more risky thing would have been to actually cast uh, an Asian actress as, as the, the main lead, you know, as the major however you want to call her, uh, and it's not as if, uh, you know, uh, Asian actresses speaking English didn't exist, that's like kind of a, a thing that, it, that is, you, you know, and uh, well, I mean, that is really pissing me off, you know, I usually, and I mean in the past, uh, and I thought that I was, you know, I uh, kind of validated this opinion of mine by saying I'm not really white, so I guess I can have this opinion. For me, whitewashing was just people being offended that, you know, uh, a director would do choices that would involve changing the ethnicity of a character because that had happened <laughs> the other way and people weren't really pissed off. Uh, it's just that, you know, oh well, I mean, uh, it's normalizing things and all that. Um, in this case, it's, I, you know, I wouldn't say that it opened my eyes because I've always kind of been uh, thinking that, yeah, you're normalizing shit, you're, you're full of shit, just, you know, you could be faithful to the thing, especially when it comes to, to uh, African Americans being portrayed uh, by white people and you're like, I mean, there are th there are a lot of high-profile American uh, African American actors and actresses that you wouldn't be taking too many risks, I guess. 
So yeah, I mean, but in this case, yeah, it's kind of a risk. You could face, you know, uh, maybe refusal from the the big production productions um, uh, companies. But that's kind of the thing with being a pioneer. You take risks. I mean, Paramount, they have already uh, accepted a movie that's gonna, you know, that <laughs> where they're gonna lose a hundred million dollars because uh, the the pe the person who pitched that was a high, f like a, a huge exec, and it was was kind of the project of his son. And I'm like, wow, nepotism much, but still, uh, you have, for example, you know. Most the, the person that s immediately comes to my mind when I think science fiction and Japan and m movies with a lot of budget, Rinko Kikuchi. She was in Pacific Rim. Uh, she's been nominated for uh, an Academy Award. I mean, you could sell tickets just with saying Rinko Kikuchi, Academy Award nominee, in the main role. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, at least they have the Depeche Mode and it's, you know, well, it's not really the Depeche Mode, it's, it sounds like a remix, a cover of, of Enjoy the Silence, but Enjoy the Silence is a very cool song, and uh, the visuals are okay, I mean, visuals are pretty impressive, but still pisses me off that, you know, oh, well, uh, you have the robots and they're, <laughs> they're portrayed by white people, despite the fact that, I mean, I guess they are supposed to be Japanese. It would make sense, you know, especially with the racism of Japanese society that I don't think will be resolved by the time Ghost in the Shell is supposed to happen. But basically, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we don't want to take too many risks. I mean, you, so it's just, you have created a pattern that will probably continue. Yeah, you will do like what would be the next big franchise of anime or manga to be adapted, maybe Evangelion, and suddenly, I mean, you have Asuka, who's supposed to be a Hafu, uh, but, no, I mean, she really looks a uh, German, and, well, I mean, Shinji, I don't know, you're gonna have Michael Sira portraying Shinji Ikari, <sighs> how's it gonna, how, you, you ju you're just gonna call him the teen, the pilot, you know, the third children, Jesus Christ, um, so anyway, speaking of whip things, the 4 channel Tambabika, there was the final day, and see, <coughs> they got eliminated by you, who got eliminated by JP, who won the whole thing against P. So I had P winning, you know, they were, I mean, they were on a roll, and that's probably what killed them, you know. Um, there were a lot of curses that were broken this year, like the Mustard Race um, curse, and um, <laughs> thanks Mew. Um, Fucking hell. Uh, and also uh, Together Forever and probably a lot of other curses. But the one curse that hasn't been broken is the curse of the Golden Boot uh, doesn't win the whole thing. It happened with A in winter of 2014 when they lost barely to TRV in the final. And it happened to P who lost pretty heftily to to JP. Uh, it was a very interesting day, lots of games being really tight, uh, like <laughs> like it reminded me a lot of the Euro 2016, where a lot of, like, the, uh, the main uh, statistic that um, jumped to my eyes was that the, the, the earliest of the last goals on this last day, so the quarterfinals, the finals, the third place game and the final, uh, the earliest of the last goals uh, was scored on the 80th, 81st minute. That's really late, uh, when, especially when you think that, uh, except for two games, the first goal was scored in the three minutes uh, surrounding the 20 minute mark. Um, and for the two, other the, the two other matches, those goals were scored in the first 10 minutes of the match, which is pretty early when you consider that the matches uh, have a, a 6 minutes half time. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but those were pretty interesting matches, though, you know, I kind of missed the matches after uh, C versus 
you because I was watching, I was finally watching Refuse to Lose, which was an amazing show. Like Joe Henry versus uh, Kurt Single was a technical masterpiece. Um, like uh, <laughs> Martin Kirby versus Joseph Connors, amazing match. Like, sure, uh, WCPW is relying on a lot of of one-time bookings, but they are really doing it well. Either the guy loses to the the local talent putting them over, or they win and they still put him over. Uh, the only time it really didn't happen was with Minoru Suzuki when he won against Joe Coffey, but then again, there was a second match at True Legacy, so, you know, that's not the end of the, the whole thing. Um, but still, you know, that, so that made me um, miss a few matches. But uh, yeah, it was very clutch victories, and that, that's what, that's what makes the game interesting. Even though that's the last time they used PES 16, and uh, for starting with the Winter Cup, they're starting to use PES 17. Who's supposed to? That's supposed to be a little more on the uh, balanced side of things. Um, anyway, uh, I'm pondering watching Raw this week because it's the go-home show to to Survivor Series. So yeah, I mean, I'm still awakened right now, and I might as well try to uh, go against my my uh, uh, current state of being really tired to see the end of the Seahawks versus Patriot games. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, anyway, I don't know why I what I will be talking about tomorrow though. Uh, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.